Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's Ask the Experts. It's uh, not Tuesday, it's a Thursday, 18th of August. We do normally run these on a Tuesday. Hey, I was uh, away in beautiful Calbarry, Western Australia on uh, Tuesday or thereabouts coming back from in fact so we're running this a little bit out of whack today and then we'll be back to the usual Tuesday format from next week. Uh, my name is Carl Kaplinga if you don't already know that I'm the market analyst over here at Think Markets Australia it's a pleasure to be joining you as we delve into the dips of your portfolio. Right, you get your portfolio questions answered you can ask me anything about ASX shares US shares I can uh, dial them up uh, in the trade view window there uh, foreign exchange crypto, commodities, indices, you name it, I'm happy to give you a technical uh, and a fundamental valuation where possible, mainly for the shares. Let's uh, kick off with uh, some requests that have come through from Twitter. Happy to, to do those. I know not everybody can join me live. Uh, this is from Crypto Caligula, and he or she is going for MLS to start off with. So let's uh, get over to the Amy Broker platform here, which is my favorite charting platform. Why is it my favorite? It just is. Don't ask questions. It's just the way I do it. Um, and I don't get uh, any money from Amy Broker for saying that. And it, you, it's one of those you need to pay for the data as well. So it can be quite an expensive exercise. Norgate data, hey, waiting for uh, the discount, the frequent flyer discount there from Norgate data. I haven't got one yet, uh, but that's who I use to power uh, the charts on screen. Looking at Metals Australia kicking off um, one of those uh, little mineral stocks, I'm guessing. Don't know a great deal about it, so I'm going to just stick with the technical analysis here. And just when we uh, go through these, in terms of giving you a fundamental valuation, I will need a company that has earnings or is about to uh, move into making some profits, right? So there's only so many I can do in that regard. I can't go and, uh, you know, uh, go to the uh, the company's website, look at all their ASX announcements for each stock. It would take too long. We've got an hour, I want to get as many questions answered. Um, so the best I can do is, is a chart in most circumstances. And at the end of the day, for me, the chart, the technicals are really telling me what's going on with demand and supply. Uh, we can talk about Fibonacci numbers, Fibonacci retracements, Elliott Wave, GAN, uh, Heikinashi, uh, Japanese candlesticks. There's a million different ways to break down a chart for me, at the end of the day, price is the result of demand and supply and the interaction thereof. It is the most basic economic tenet. Okay, so you go to economics 101. If you've ever done that, I did it uh, back in university. Literally, day one, a uh, professor gets up there and says, hey, uh, demand plus supply equals price. Okay, now at the end of the day, if there is a great deal of demand or uh, that demand is in excess of supply, so there's more demand than supply, price will go up. Uh, if supply is more than demand, price will go down. And if demand and supply equal, uh, price will be uh, roughly flat or sideways. Nobody can argue with me on that. You, you might disagree with my overall trend following strategy or, or candlesticks, how I read them, but at the end of the day, um, that nobody can disagree with that. So I know I'm, I'm, I'm going on a, on a little bit about this, but when I get to this, the, the point is, I can't know the intricate details of every stock I'm going to discuss today or ever in, in RC Experts. So don't get angry with me for that. Um, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what the company is doing. All that matters is what people perceive the value is in what the company is doing. And I'm going to put to you, getting it back to MLS, the perception is there's not a great deal of um, uh, desire among, among investors to own this company right here, right now at this price. How do I know that? We'll look at the, look at the chart. Uh, we do have oh, the long-term trend, I'm gonna call it down because we're trading beneath it and it's gone into that neutral phase. So traffic light system, green is an uptrend, orange is a neutral trend, and then uh, pink or dark pink would be a downtrend. Short-term trend has popped up, but really it is failing again. Uh, and in the absence of those two uptrends, telling me that there's an excessive demand system, people are, are happy to put money in this, and people who have it are happy to hold onto it. What I'm seeing here is that people who have the stock are more likely to want to get rid of it, and people who have money are more likely to go somewhere else to look for opportunity. And at the end of the day, um, my daughter is 13, she's in year seven, and she's starting to do economics. And she's coming home and she's talking about, um, you know, all these definitions. Um, she's actually got, got a test today, she just sent me a message. Uh, and I, I, I said to her, um, opportunity cost is the single 
uh, most important factor in economics. It drives every decision we make uh, to consume or to supply our, our own uh, personal capital. Opportunity cost is what you're missing out on. And we have to understand that when it comes to the stock that is in your portfolio right now, your favorite stock, the one you love because you read reams and reams of information of where they're kicking over rocks in which desert right now and how prospective they are, um, at the end of the day, uh, when, when investors, that's us, that's not you, go to make a decision as to what to buy, to help push your stock up, it's all about opportunity costs. What are we missing out on by uh, investing in your company? And if we see that we're missing out on a, on a whole world of opportunity out there compared to what we can get in your company, we're going to go elsewhere. And I think that's what is uh, that's what that's the story we're getting in Metals X. Now, I could be completely wrong because tomorrow um, the price could be up here, and I'm happy uh, to, tomorrow to admit, you know what, I got that wrong. I didn't see it coming. It wasn't in the chart. It wasn't in the de in the demand and supply. Okay, what all I can say is right now, at best, it's very flat, isn't it? This, we've got roughly an equilibrium but in, in the money coming in to the shareholders who are already there who want to get out. Why do they want to get out? Because of opportunity cost, because of the cost of holding this compared to being in something else that might be going up. Sorry, Crypto Kill, you go. I'm not a big fan of this one. Buy, hold, sell on this. I can't really see a reason to hold it. Um, I'm certainly not a buyer. So make of that what you will. I'm going to whiz through the next one, the next few here, because I suspect uh, that they, they're, well, I was going to suspect we, we won't get a lot of fundamentals, so I can stick to the charts. But this one is something I'm very interested in straight away. In terms of opportunity costs, investors are happy to be in this and are equally therefore happy to not be in other stuff. They want to keep their money in here. Uh, new investors uh, are coming in and looking at this and wanting to, to, to be involved. Um, obviously, the supply side hanging on. And ordinarily, I would have said this is amazing, wonderful, wonderful, because our trends, our short term uh, and long term trends look very, very solid. And by that, I mean uh, this short term trend here and this long term trend here. And this is more of the stuff you want to get your eye in uh, and be looking for. OK, this is where you can have the highest probability of success. The only problem I have with this is this thing here. Uh, and this is uh, well, you could call it a doji. You could call it a shooting star candle. This last one here. Either way, it is often uh, symptomatic of an exhaustion, an exhaustion of demand, okay? Because the only way you get a candle like that is if there's a great deal of demand in the system in the morning to push the price up. So as we're going up, it's here we go, here we go, here we go, a little bit of a hiccup here, here we go, okay? And it gets to a point where there is a big seller up here or uh, you know, uh, uh, we have motivated supply. All right, and really uh, an excess of supply uh, compared to demand, right? And that's the deal because motivated supply is kind of nothing unless it's uh, it, it's it's overwhelming the demand of the system. Um, so the demand's coming. We know that the price pushed up, but to 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 uh, to satisfy that demand. So people are coming in. I've got cash. I've got cash. Give me shares. Give me shares at Greenstone. I want them. I want them. I want them. And you know what? Somebody said, no worries. There you go. You got them. I got all the shares you want, pal. Yeah, give me your cash. I'll take some more cash. Oh, you, you want some more shares? Yeah, okay, I've got plenty. I've got plenty. And eventually the demand gets to the point where, well, there's, there's no more fresh meat to the grinder and that supply uh, is clearly taking over, okay? Um, the problem with this pattern, this, this and you, get, you go to these Japanese candlestick books and you read, ah, oh, doji is bearish, okay? Next page, <laughs> you know? Something else is bullish. Something, understand why these things are bearish okay don't just go there's the pattern understand what the hell is going on with the pattern so you've got to understand that at one stage that candle looked like this okay so imagine uh, a couple of hours ago the candle looked a bit like this it's got a little lower shadow down the bottom which i will draw in a second Okay, so bear with me because this is not the greatest drawing. Uh, it doesn't have the greatest drawing tools in it, Amy Proker. Uh, so uh, we're, uh, let's, let's do that. That's even better. And then I can go in here and I can make the fill color white. And bang, bang we got this. Um, this is what that candle, that shooting star candle, that's what it looks like now. But this is what it looked like uh, early in the morning. Because as it was going up, it opened low and it was trading at the high of the day at whatever that high is there. Let's go here, uh, 8.4 uh, 8 cents, right? So this is uh, 8.4 cents. 
okay? And the open was at whatever it was at down there, uh, 7.3 cents, 3 cents, there we go. And uh, the low was whatever it was. Okay, so this is all demand here. So the only way you can get from, uh, you know, point, if we call this uh, point A uh, to point B, is if that supply has come into the system. Now, here's the thing. Um, unfortunately, somebody got in here, somebody got in here, somebody got in here, somebody got in here, somebody got in here. This is why this is a bearish pattern. And all of these people uh, who got in, right, uh, were thinking uh, this is going to the moon, right? This is, this is amazing, this is wonderful, this is brilliant. That's at point A. How are they feeling at point B? Okay, all the people that got in up here at 8.4 cents, 8 cents, buying in with this wonderful trend, how they're feeling at point B. At point B, they're feeling uh, a little miffed, perhaps. Maybe, is that the right word? <laughs> a little miffed, a little confused, right? You know the feeling, you've all been here, a little confused. I thought this was going up. I thought this was the best thing ever. Okay, maybe we're also feeling a little bit of regret as well because uh, we got an 8.4 and now it's back to basically open at 7.3. Okay, we're losing quite a bit of money in percentage terms. What do we want now? What do we really want? If you are the point A people and you're now at point B, uh, you would really love for this thing to get back up to where you got in so you could get out and undo your mistake. Okay, and unfortunately, not everybody's gonna think like that, but many people will. And what that does is it creates latent supply uh, in and around these highs, okay? Uh, and we know, we know that that supply, uh, that those levels were supply anyway, because that's where the seller came in uh, to meet that demand. So this becomes a super, 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 uh, major, major, major important point of latent supply, okay? And, and on charts, you'll see me label them as POS for point of supply, or major point of supply, I think is what's gonna be in this case. Uh, so uh, I like Greenstone Resources, but I think it's gonna pull back. I think su supply has finally put its fingerprints on this one, and we're probably gonna get a pullback within trend, I would suggest, uh, to this light green zone, which is probably gonna keep rising and kick in around six and a half. Probably also kick in around this level here, that old high, which is uh, 6.6 .6 cents. I would suggest you would be an interesting level to watch for a candle that looks the opposite of that, the exact opposite of that. So the candle we wanna see uh, in this zone here, right, so this is our potential, uh, point of demand. We don't know yet until we get there. But the way we will know is if we get the candle that looks like this. So it's the, well, it's a, I guess a doji, but it's not a shooting star this time. They often call them hammers. So you'd imagine this is the shooting star that's gone up and come down. That's what a shooting star does. Um, this is often, this one's often called the hammer. Okay, the hammer, just imagine you're holding, uh, this is the handle bit and this is the top of the hammer there. Okay, so if you see this one, uh, and preferably it's white, it doesn't have to be, it's the shadow that's the important bit, that exhaustion of supply. Remember the shooting star was the exhaustion of demand, supply coming in. This hammer is all about the exhaustion of supply and demand coming in. You see that in there, that is magic, that is where I like to buy. I like to buy um, pullbacks with good price action in nice, strong, developing uptrends at my light green zone, because that's generally uh, where these things occur. Uh, I like Greenstone, but I think today it might have done its dash. Now, there is one caveat to that um, comment because it's still a live candle. Hey, how do I know that that supply isn't completely out of the market and the demand side says, you know what? We're back, we're back, baby. We're here, we're still here. And the, the, they managed to push that, because that candle current closes here, they managed to push that all the way back up and actually turn it. Imagine if they turned it back into this thing again. Okay, it's a live candle. You shouldn't be doing analysis on live candles. I've got no choice, I'm here with you, I have to do it. But understand that the best thing to do is to wait for the candles to close and then make your decisions based upon that. So understand it is a live candle, things can change uh, intraday until we get to the end. Uh, that's a very interesting one. I might skip the uh, CRR, I know it's a bit of a, bit of a popular one. I'm gonna lock this in the uh, MLS basket. I don't think there's enough 
good stuff going on there to get excited. Uh, the big problem for me is this area in here, which I do believe is going to act as a pretty significant point of supply. You already see it. So uh, you say, oh, Carl, you, you know, you're like, geez, I've come here and I suffer through you. I suffer through you every Thursday. You think you're so clever. Well, you know what? It is acting as a point of supply. Look at that little shadow up the top there. Look at the black candles coming in. You know, uh, I keep I keep telling you that previous points of demand tend to act, not all the time, tend to act as points of supply. And it's all to do with this concept of ex post regret. You know what? That's probably another powerful force in economics, isn't it? We did something and now we wish we didn't do it. And how do we undo that silly thing we just did? So all the people who got in here thinking it was going up. And were there people who got in here thinking it was going back up? Sure there were. How do I know? Look, it bounced. It went up from there two times. So they uh, will be looking at that as their potential break-even level, an area where they can undo their mistakes. And this is why we are seeing right now the supply signs of supply coming in. Uh, there is some good stuff happening in terms of, yes, the, the trend is turning back up. Look, I like that candle there. We've got a little bit of a push here. That's nice in the volume to get it going again. Um, and this is the area now. What's going to happen here? Uh, you know, do we get that demand side candle and push back off it, or do we sit here and wallow and wait with a bunch of black candles and then uh, go back down again? I'm not sure if I want to play the game to find out, so I'm going to go pass on this one. Greenstone, I think, looks great, but I think given the supply candle we saw, parties may be over for now. Okay, um, MLS, a bit like the CRR. There you go, Crypto Caligula, all done for you. Let's get into the list of everyone else. I won't have to talk as long on the next ones, of course, because it's about getting these foundations out of the way at the start, isn't it? Now, let's get to James's comment. James is talking about ALC, which is Alcidian. Uh, now, I know this was a super duper favorite a little while ago, wasn't it? A little while ago, when I say a little while ago, around here, look at that. What an amazing trend, but unfortunately trends change. So we, we, you know, you can't assume that you can buy and hold and make money forever. You have to understand when we go through these um, phases where you've got your demand side market, I might call it, okay, where demand is greater than supply. Uh, and you know, the two arrows are interesting, isn't it? Because you could say, well, you know, demand is still greater than supply here, but maybe only sort of one arrow. And then after here, you, look, I think you'd, you'd be the bravest and most optimistic person in the world to say that demand is still greater than supply. I think, you know, demand is now equal to supply. Uh, and then, you know, you might start to say, well, maybe supply is just starting to beat demand here. Uh, and then uh, clearly, uh, you know, your supply it's greater than demand and it's very it's too easy it's all too easy to get caught up in the market hype and the rhetoric and our own emotions and just and ignore what is clearly happening in the charts now let's uh, continue with this this idea here well i'm still reckon supply is greater than demand here but you know let's go back to just the one the one arrow imagine if you did this for every stock you owned and you ever owned in your whole entire history of you investing it's so simple isn't it it's so simple but it, you know, it's so valuable, and I reckon it would have helped you along the way. And mm, can we go to two two arrows here, two greater thans? Probably not. I still think. I still think. Well, I was going to say I still think demand's grain supply. Let, let's just let's maybe just play it safe and say, well, that's kind of where we are now, isn't it? Maybe we're back to even, uh, and we're kind of just wondering what the hell's going on, really, isn't it? Uh, is this a company again that where the opportunity cost? Uh, dynamics are so compelling that this is the one we want to be on and we don't want to be on anything else. Uh, and both the demand side, that is cash out there seeking uh, a return uh, and shareholders uh, seeking a better return uh, are thinking the same way. I'm not so sure. Uh, I'm also concerned that where this rally is terminating um, is at my, my long-term downtrend zone. It tends to, to do that. And then we've also got a pretty key uh, point of supply through here. So uh, people undoing the mistake of buying uh, and getting out here. But not all is lost. Not all is lost for this one because um, I think we've got some pretty reasonable, sensible areas where we could say things are definitely turning around. Not maybe, not perhaps, but things are definitely turning around. So this is a key point of supply through here. Obviously, uh, we are interacting with this one here. Now, if we can close above each of those levels, then I think 
maybe this rally, which is developing, has some legs, okay? But not until then. Until then, the more, more likely scenario is probably sideways, if anything, in line with the longer term trend to go down. It can't go down that much because it's only, you know, 14 cents now. Uh, but I wouldn't get too excited until we at least closed above that high there, 18 cents. So 18 and a half on a closing basis or higher, but then we're gonna be limited by this. So you have to start to bring in your idea of risk and reward. What are we risking? What's in it for us? Because we're probably gonna bump into the next point of supply around here. And that high is uh, 21 and a half. Uh, maybe there's a little bit here, reinforcing it, not far away. Then there's definitely gonna be some there. And then there's definitely gonna be some there. And it just feels like this is a little bit of hard work for me. That's just me. Uh, buy, hold or sell, I can confidently say it's not a buy. Uh, would you hold it if I squinted and you were suffering with it for ages and you were committed to making this work? Oh, I can get to a hold adjust. But really, if I'm telling you to hold it, I'm kind of saying that um, in terms of opportunity cost, there's nothing better out there, isn't it? Logically, if I've told you to hold, I'm, I'm by default saying that in terms of opportunity cost, there's nothing better out there and you therefore uh, you are better staying with it. I don't think I can even get to that, unfortunately, on ALC. Now, I wonder if ALC has some earnings in the system coming up, perhaps. Our Citium Group, as I know, is... Um, trying to get to you know, cash flow, uh, free cash flow positive. It's kind of be there or thereabouts. Um, what I do know is that this, this cash flow positive year has been pushed out. So I did follow it a little while ago. Uh, but in theory, cash flow positive uh, next year and uh, getting an EPS next year, so profit next year, and then um, going from 0.001 of a share to 0.005 of a share the year after that. So it's a, it, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, small company with you know small earnings in the offing. We've only got one broker giving us consensus here. And what we're doing here is look at the Thomson Reuters Refinitiv Icon product, which gives me broker data and also historical data where available. It doesn't look like there's a lot available in this one. Uh, and then I do some, some magic formulas here to tell me if I think it's good value or not. Uh, I'm not gonna get a whole lot out of this one, really. I'm not even gonna bother uh, with one broker there, but for what it's worth, that broker is a strong buy, mind you, a strong buy uh, with a target price of 20 cents. So that's a strong buy for a target price of 20 cents, which is a little bit curious for me. Let's um, let's call that one. Let's keep moving. Next one is for Andrew, and Andrew's asking about BRX. And I'm trying to remember, BRX not one that rings a bell. Looks pretty new, doesn't it? So let me uh, go here. And I'm um, just going to confirm by trying to zoom out. I can't zoom out. So this is a fairly new company, uh, a spin-off from something perhaps or an IPO. Uh, was, as su such as you know, so often the case, uh, after the initial euphoria wears out, you get these protracted uh, periods of down uh, of downtrend. Uh, but this is very encouraging here. So this looks very interesting to me. I, I'm looking at the, uh, the excitement here coming back in. Uh, I would suggest if we're maintaining high volumes at an old point of uh, supply, we are removing that supply, which is good, and we're holding above it. Uh, so this is all looking pretty good for me on this first pass here anyway. Uh, probably a little bit of supply in here, not not showing us too many uh, problems actually. So you know, areas where I would expect there to be supply, not showing um, a great deal of supply. Uh, there's a little bit coming in here. I think it's pretty minor. How do I know it's minor? Well, the candle's not huge. The shadow, upper shadow's not great, but the candle's not huge um, within the, the context of this uh, this move here, which is which is solid. It's strong. It's on volume. The uh, trend is changing here, which is good. We don't have a long-term trend. It hasn't been around long enough. Uh, but I think this is interesting. And this is one where I could easily get to a hold, because I think there's something going on here. I'm not quite at a buy. What would I want to see to make this a buy? You know I'm going to draw a box somewhere around here. You know I'm going to point to that box, right, with an arrow. And then I'm going to say, look, let's see how it goes. A little bit of a pullback. And it may not, it may not pull back uh, before you see the candle I'm about to draw. You know what the candle is seen it 100 times if you've been listening to me long enough and uh, it looks like this so if we can see this candle and we may not but if we see this candle uh, in and around that box and why am i uh, why did i put the box here well let me actually just move this box right maybe a little bit higher because so i'm looking at this remember what i said before uh, that old points of uh, demand become supply and old points of supply uh, tend to act as, act as points of demand we could also see uh, we'll have a confluence of uh, this potential uh, old point of supply acting this point of demand and and our uh, short-term dynamic trend zone 
ribbon. That is that this one here coming in and knocking in around there. So if I see that candle in there, I could certainly upgrade this one to a buy, but I'm happy to go a hold in the meantime for you, Andrew. Next one is uh, CBE. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, what a monster. Um, you know, and here's the other thing. Uh, Let's uh, actually, I've got my update coming. It goes, comes at 20 past the hour each hour. So it's uh, at 11.24 local time here in Perth. Uh, we are going to see this one update in a second. Uh, update, update, update. And there you go. You can see that the change in the process so it shot a little bit higher. You can see a little bit of supply coming in around that 40 cent level. Uh, what we're looking at here is uh, managing our exit potentially because this thing is not going to go up in a straight line forever no matter how wonderful it is but you'd be crazy crazy to sell it until it gives you good reason to do so what does a good reason to sell it look like well that's actually a pretty good reason there that candle is is enough of a supply event to knock out a little bit and i often say uh, don't sell it all don't sell all of your holdings in one go on something that's this hot but you might want to knock out a few and then wait for exactly that candle to, to come in at the light green zone. It didn't happen here, did it? it it's not gonna happen every time. Uh, what was even better than that candle was, was this thing here. Um, so you might have uh, added back in here on the strength of that close. It's amazing, amazing. You might have even added it back. And then you probably say, hey, Carl, what's the point of selling that one third uh, here and buying it back there? Well, you don't know, do you? You don't know the future. There is no point. You're right. There is no point if you can tell the future. And if you can tell the future, why the hell are you listening to me? Um, but what we do know is that as the supply was coming in. Hey, it could have gone back to 12 to 10 or whatever, and you would have been happy you knocked a few out there. But this is just letting the market tell you what to do. Stop thinking you know what to do uh, and just let the market tell you what to do. And this is a huge demand side in here. Is this a supply event? No, I don't think so. Um, I don't think you need to knock out another third forgetting whether you, you bought back or not. It's irrelevant uh, whether you need to knock out another third. What would cause you to become more concerned? One of these candles here, you know the drill. Uh, it's probably going to look something like that. And we explained exactly the um, the psychology behind this candle earlier on in the presentation. Okay, so watch out for something like that occurring around here. Uh, and that would be your indication to take another, I would say third, or you could go half, you know, whatever your model is. It's just my model. Your model is your model. My model is my model. Do whatever makes you happy is a good way to live your life. Uh, now, uh, I'd Interesting, but uh, could I buy it now? No, I can't buy it now. Why? Because it's it's so far away from where I like to get in, which is um, nice pullbacks, nice candles, light green zone in a well-established uptrend. Uh, but if you're on it, well done, congratulations. Uh, hang on to it for now, I would suggest. Whitehaven, this is another one which is going gangbusters at the moment. Hopefully a few people still on it. This one's for Craig. And uh, maybe Craig's looking at this. Maybe Craig's going, ooh, I don't think Carl will like that very much. Look, it's not ideal, is it? These upper shadows occurring at a round number. I'm not too fussed about seven. You know, here's the odd thing about round numbers, Craig, is that, uh, and you go Google this, studies show that your, um, your even numbers are more relevant than your odd numbers, okay? So you're more likely to, say, a pause at a, a four than a three, uh, but more likely to pause at a five than a four, because fives, more important even than your four or your six, as is 10 is more important. Um, now, um, if I give you like a schedule, okay, so if we said, uh, obviously, we'll start at one. Um, now how can I go? I have to go down. Okay, imagine we're going, uh, we're going the other way. So one, two, uh, and then you would skip. You would go to four, get what I mean? And then you would go to five, then you'd go to six, but you'd skip seven, you'd go to eight in terms of importance. Nine is irrelevant. I cannot state to you the irrelevance of nine. And this is because when we're at nine, nobody cares we're at nine because guess what everybody's thinking about now? They're thinking about 10. Why would you sell at nine when you can hang on a bit longer and get 10? Then you go to 12, then you skip 13, you go to 14. 14's not a big deal, to be honest. 15's more important than that. Uh, and then would you bother with 16? I don't I, I don't think you're bothering too much with that. I, you know, you could almost get rid of 14 if you wanted to. Uh, we're probably going 20. We're going 25. We're going 30. Uh, and then is 35 important? Oh, look, maybe, but probably nowhere near as important as 40, far more important. 45 is irrelevant because nine is irrelevant. Nobody's gonna sell at 45. Everyone's going, oh, geez, please God, if you just let this stock go to $45, please. 
50 is important. 60, forget 70, okay? And then 90 is one of the least relevant numbers in the history of mankind, even less relevant than nine because everybody wants 100, okay? And you can imagine uh, the cycle keeps perpetuating from there. So these are the key round numbers you wanna look at because potentially you could find, uh, not only do you see the wrong, the wrong price action there, you, the, 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 the supply side coming in and interacting because they're thinking, well, I wanna get this price, okay? Um, but you can use it. You can say, well, I'm gonna sell some at, uh, at, at 50 bucks for no other reason, but it's a big round number. I'm not gonna sell all my holdings, but clearly this is gonna be a problem here. If only in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the near term until we can overwhelm the supply that is getting out there for no other reason than it's a round number, okay? Uh, long story to tell you that seven is no big deal. Okay, great. So I'm not fussed about it. And look, there is an upper shadow, that's not ideal. Hey, the candle's still live. What's far more interesting is this and this. And I can't see any reason why would you why you'd manage your exit here on what have and it's given us very few reasons. Oh, look, maybe that, but look, how how did it come back the next day? You know, I, I think you you you're a bit of a nervous Nelly if you're jumping at any of those candles in there, to be honest. I think it looks fine. Uh, so I'm happy to go hold on that one. Would I buy it? Oh, look, I could buy it with the right candle. You know, continue to wait for those demand side candles. Uh, maybe holding this level here. This is going to be a little bit of a demand side zone, I'd suggest. Uh, it's pretty well evidenced, I think, through there, okay, if you're not in it, to buy it, but I can't see any reason uh, to, to manage your exit at this stage. Okay, IMR is the next one. This one's from, um, this one is from Chris, and we're looking at a white candle from last week, which actually looks really good. Uh, I have no idea what these guys do. IMR, actually, I did I put this on my, my, I think I put this on my shortly scan a little while ago. I've, I don't know what they do. I know it's something to do with medical, but I'm pretty sure I put this on my scan um, because, because it may be even on this white candle day uh, because that looks good there. So what I like is this, uh, what I call control pattern. So when you have a nice move, so through here, let's make that an arrow, shall we? Let's get rid of that one. Uh, let's make that an arrow. You get a nice move through here. And then you get a very shallow pullback with small, small candles indicating very little um, response from the su supply side. And then you get um, the re-exertion of demand. This is a great way to kick off a trend, especially when you've had this volume climax. So I'm liking this even more and a little push through here as well through potential supply zone. Uh, I think this looks really, really solid as a turnaround play. And I've got two types of um, setups. So setup is uh, like a set of conditions that need to be met. So, you know, set of conditions which need to be me, <laughs> be met uh, to enter a trade, right? And two main ones. Uh, the first one is sort of, I just call it in trend. Uh, so, you know, um, bottom left and top right. Okay. Well, I know demand is established. I know that the probability is, is in my favor already. And then I've got my turnaround play, right? That's what I call it. Uh, and in terms of risk, uh, obviously uh, this one is the low risk uh, and this one is the high risk. So understand of that in terms of maybe your capital allocation. But so you can always add in. So I, I, would I buy this one today? Yeah, I think I would buy this one today, uh, keeping in mind I have no idea what it does, nor do I really care, to be honest. But I'm happy to buy this on the basis that um, I think supply is done and dusted and out of this system. Uh, I think demand is starting to come back in. And, this, and, and the, the purpose of explaining this control um, pattern is that supply supply is not very motivated anymore, right? So we had this uh, prolonged period of motivated supply. How do I know they're motivated? Look at the, look at the price. And I think we've got um, a lack of, lack of motivation uh, to supply. And I, maybe because, well, think about why. Why might the supply side be less motivated to supply? And I think, I think it's because uh, I think the supply's done. I think I think whoever had to get out is out, and whoever's left over is more happy to to hold. And there's some demand coming in, so that demand is hitting less supply, and we're actually able to move up. Uh, where could it all unravel for you, Chris? Keep an eye on this level here, but there's a bit of room to move there until we get there, isn't it? Okay. So from a raw to risk perspective, you know, if you if you're sort of tapping out here. If it gets beneath that level and you're getting in around here, we've got at least the one-to-one -one which I need. And I say you need at least, it doesn't have to be two-to-one or three, you need at least one-to-one, because who's to say, who's to say it's gonna stop here, Nostradamus? Smarty pants. It might go up to here, 
wipe to here, or it might not stop anywhere. Okay, so the minimum is one to one. I think it looks interesting. Dare I look? <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to find anything here. Uh, I'll entertain you on this one, Chris. Oh, surprise, surprise, we do have one, a total of one broker who covers it. Uh, same one as Alcidian is my guess. Strong buy. Look at this, $1.88 price target. Uh, no PE though, uh, and no PE for the foreseeable future. So they might make money in FY25, so I can't give you a valuation. Let's go to the next one from King. He's looking at RIC, which is Ridley Corporation, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, wonderful stairway to heaven, looks good. Uh, this was a bit concerning, wasn't it? This old candle here, uh, but it did manage to hold the zone, which is good, uh, and, then, and then head back up. So uh, happy to hold that one. Do we need to exit? I don't know, King, what do you reckon? Oh. Look, here's the thing. Here's the thing. We we think. Look, we think that two dollars could be a round number, right? And round numbers tend to work better if you spent more time at the previous round number uh, or half. Uh, so so one in this case uh, is it one? But yeah, well, look, we did spend a bit of time at one, um, but it's, this is so sketchy. It's hard, it's hard to say. So if we spend a lot of time at one, you might spend a lot of time at two, okay? Because the people who got in at one, were there lots of people that got in at one? Yeah, there were, spent a lot of time there. They go, well, hey, if this thing doubles, I'm out of there, right? So you might see a little bit of supply coming at two. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing is you don't know the supply until it manifests itself in the system. And the way it does that, it's like fingerprints, we call these fingerprints of supply, is you wanna wait and see what happens in here. In here. So uh, if this, if we get a bunch of shadows up here, upper shadows, that's the supply. Black candles, that's the supply. Until then, happy days. Look, 100% it's a hold. Would I buy it? Maybe I'd be more enthusiastic in buying it if it just wasn't nudging into that round number. But I, I think it's very, very solid. Let's have a look at the fundamentals for RIC. What is the valuation case? The fundamentals, of course, what the company does. Um, I know the uh, car parts, if I'm not mistaken, really corporations have been around forever. We do have five brokers on this one. That's, that's encouraging in terms of giving us more confidence in the numbers that they're providing for us. No strong buys, three buys, one hold, no sells or strong sells. We have a price target of 187, that's over here, uh, which allows for about 2% upside in the share price, but that's based upon yesterday's close because um, obviously it won't update until uh, the close today. That makes sense also. Uh, in terms of earnings per share, we do have some growth uh, through here. And look, since uh, since COVID, a little a little bit of a, a, a drop in COVID, but, but really not that much, isn't it? So we, we've come back actually uh, a modest fall only in COVID, and then we've come back pretty strong. Uh, and we're looking, this is all going to be very weird. This is a work in progress, this particular sheet. Okay. Uh, there is an, There is another sheet which doesn't have this stuff. 11% uh, compound annual growth rate, uh, which is pretty healthy, you know. So what is the market paying for this 11%, you know, low double-digit growth rate? I think 15 is a pretty sensible um, uh, rate to pay. It was paid as 16 times last year's earnings, 15 times 13. So I think that's all pretty sensible. 14 is okay. Um, I don't think we need to make it any higher than that. I don't think we need to make it any lower than that either. Risk level, um, I don't know enough about it, but... Uh, if you believe it's low, if you believe it's low king, stick with that valuation. I'll change this to moderate if you think there's a little bit of risk in there in terms of them executing on this, okay? And you can see we get to 193. So I'm not telling you which one's right, I'm just showing you what they are, okay? Now, if you believe it's moderate, there's still a little bit of upside. So I'm gonna say this one is on um, the right side of fair value. If anything, if the, the risk is low, I don't know, uh, I'd have to actually break down the company and have a look at the uh, what they're doing uh, and you know, micro macro factors, uh, you could say maybe it's on the, on the right side of cheap. But it's certainly supportive of this picture here, isn't it, King? I think that's giving you confidence. So if you've got a nice chart uh, and you've got some uh, nice valuation behind it, it, gives you a little bit more confidence to hang on. Not that the valuation means anything to me. I always make my decisions solely based on the chart at the end of the day. CTT is one we looked at last week. We said it was a bit of a cheeky, sneaky, um, mega risky turnaround play by um, actually, it must have been uh, was it last week. We, yeah, it must have been Tuesday. Maybe it was here. Uh, so uh, here or here. It hasn't done a whole lot since then, has it? it, it you know, it's been pretty flat. I still think it's okay. Uh, I can't see anything really sinister in here just yet to tell us that we wouldn't stick with it. But 
obviously understand you are doing this uh, right here at the long-term downtrend, okay? Um, but we like the, the recovery. We like the recovery. So from little things, big things grow. The question you want to know is buy, hold, or sell. I can hold. I can't see. Like I, said, I can't see anything too sinister in there that, that would tell me to sell. So I'm happy to go hold. I think if we can push back through here, this can get going again. Uh, and what about resistance and potential supply points? Supply point here. That's still plenty of upside. So I'm happy to go hold. I don't think it's a buy today. Today's candle is a little bit bearish there, but it's a small one. Okay. This low here, ideally that holds. Uh, that low 92 and a half. We really don't want to see it close below there. That wouldn't be would not be ideal. Um, but this is the key, key demand point now, that high there's 75. So there's a bit of bit of wiggle room, isn't it? Um, ideally, we don't see it close below that one, 92.5. Happy to go. Happy to go hold on that one. Uh, did we do the fundamentals for Setire last week? I don't think we did. Let's check them out. I'm curious on these turnaround plays. Always curious to see how they're going. We don't have any broker coverage. Okay, these numbers are just gobbledygook. And you can see here we don't have any estimates. Um, so I can't give you the valuation on that one. Rupam. Uh, Andrew, Terracom. You can certainly put that in here. Not that we're going to get uh, any sense out of it. I don't think we have a great yeah, We don't have a great deal of coverage there either, unfortunately. So let's head back to the chart in Terracom. This is our, our coal company. Uh, mainly thermal coal does have, though, some coke and coal exposure and obviously does have a little bit of exposure to um, those Queensland royalties. But looking good for me. I still think it's... Uh, I did my own valuation, uh, not in that spreadsheet. I came up with about $1.20 and I can't see any reason, given where coal prices are, to change that. Uh, very good. I can't find anything to fault this one, really. It's, it's, it's all fantastic here. So it's a picture of demand for me. Yes, there is going to be a bit of supply in here, and I think that's what it's dealing with, is it slowly, surely dealing with the fact that a bunch of people got tagged here. Yep, tagged. Tagged by the market. Have you ever been tagged by the market? <laughs> tagged by the market? I don't know. Tagged by our uh, our enthusiasm, <laughs> perhaps. Um, yeah, maybe we got uh, a little bit enthusiastic about that one on that day, uh, and then they got caught. Yeah, they got caught. They were, they were feeling uh, they're feeling a bit you know, sort of a bit depressed with that like, the decision down here. And for many of them, it does represent break even. Uh, and you know, as much as I can convince them that uh, they should hang on and, and hold out for more, um, some of them will sell there and cause a little bit of a pause, I think. But the demand looks good. I think the demand side uh, is very solid on this one for now. It can change tomorrow. What I think you need to understand on this one, Andrew, uh, is that buy, hold, sell, happy to go a, a hold and even a buy. I think I'm a buy on that one quite confidently. So I haven't changed my view on this one for a while. And this one here, which is, let's have a look at the um, Newcastle coal futures. So you can see thermal coal last couple of weeks trending back up again. Uh, there was an announcement today from Origin um, saying that you know they're, they're just they're just trying to lock down this coal situation. You know they've gone from um, uh, contracting two trains of coal to seven trains of coal. Demand is not uh, demand is let's face it inflexible for the time being, and supply uh, is pretty constant, right? So prices are hanging up here on thermal coal. I can't see any reason in this chart to suggest that coal prices are going to just crash all of a sudden. In fact, if anything, they are building towards another breakout. I mean, these, this could be 500 and that will be on the news, no doubt, when it happens. So that's your, uh, that's your thermal coal. And if you're wondering what the coking coal picture looks like, it's not as good. Okay, and this is where your companies like your, your Stanmore, your Bathurst, um, your Bowen, your Cocal are probably going to struggle a bit more than your White Havens, your New Hopes, and your Terracoms because I've just delineated for you the coking coal picture to the thermal coal picture. Now, not to say coking coal isn't rallying. Okay, so that's you know it's called a spade a spade. It is it is rallying for the last few weeks, but I just think the picture is less certain for coking coal because if you don't know what coking coal is, you whack it in a big blast furnace. You've probably seen them on TV, those giant big crucible looking things with the molten steel bubbling around in them. So you whack the coal in there uh, with this iron ore, okay? So this is not looking anywhere near as good. So that's why I'm less enthusiastic about uh, coking coal. So I think the China demand story is not great. 
right? But we still need to keep warm. It's bloody cold over here in Perth. <laughs> Let's get on to the next one. This one's for JS. So that's a pretty interesting little um, uh, broader discussion there, isn't it, for you, Andrew, on coal prices and uh, coal outlook. Let's get back to the stocks. We're going to look at uh, South 32, which I think has some coal, or did they divest it? I think they divested their coal, didn't they, uh, in that drive by many of these major resource companies to, to go green. Uh, and you would have seen all these wonderful ads on TV about how green they are, particularly BHP. <laughs> BHP is not green, let me tell you. But I need to be careful what I say so I don't get sued. Uh, but certainly the commercials uh, are wonderful, aren't they? Wonderful marketing from these companies. Uh, look, I, I haven't picked... I haven't picked the resources sector all that well. Honestly, I thought this, the whole sector was going to tank. Uh, I thought there was more downside, 20 30%. BHP, Rio, Fortescue, the works. It hasn't happened. Uh, the, and the reason why it hasn't happened is because the rest of the bloody market rallied and saved their backsides. Because I reckon without that market rally, uh, even if the market went sideways, I'm not going to be, sound like a genius here and say, well, if the market kept going down, they would have gone, they would have went down, I would have been right. But even if the market went sideways, I reckon these guys would have gone down. I reckon they got saved by the rally. A lot of the money that was um, built up to the short side, for good reason, I believe that it will be borne out. A lot of that money that's built up to the short side has had to cover back. Um, because the timing clearly isn't right and the rest of the market rallied. Then you have to say, well, why did the rest of the market rally? <laughs> Nothing to do with resources. The rest of the market rallied because of Commonwealth Bank, because of National Australia Bank, because of Westpac. Look at the look at the moves here from the bottom of the ASX 200. There's your ASX 200. There you go. That's Westpac. Okay, so it's a Get this snapshot, this in your brain, burn that into memory as I go back here and show you uh, which companies caused it. Memory burn, that, okay, and then that. That's what I was trying to do. Uh, that. Uh, now I'm going to go to something else, CSL as well. Okay, this is where your index points are. Your, your major, major index points are coming from these companies. Okay, so that. Looks like less of it, it's, well, it's straight away, it's just not that ASX 200 rally, is it? Okay, for me, this is short covering, speculative buying for dividends and silly things that Australian investors love to do. That's not what we saw in the ASX 200, isn't it? So you can see the lag here. Uh, Santos hasn't rallied. And then you've got crazy stuff going on like this, where there's no way you can predict that based upon the chart, okay? So I'm a little bit more concerned about this stuff. How the hell did I get onto this topic? Uh, well, it's JS's fault. Uh, they got me talking about South 32. I'm a bit of a resources bear, and uh, as a, a Perth boy born and bred, what does that mean? You know, that's just, that's blasphemy. Uh, I'd be a bit, bit cautious around here. I can't see it in the, I can't see it in the, in the candles. Candles are fine, trends are fine. Yeah, but something is nagging away at me saying, hmm. China situation is going to catch up to these guys. Buy, hold, sell. I think you can hold it because the technicals don't look terrible. All right, so I'd love to. I think the long-term trend is down. The short-term trend is up. Okay, let's have a quick look at this. I'm curious, and we're going to see, you know, this common theme here. I need to get that back to this, and maybe we will get some data. There we go. Good. Uh, so compound annual growth rate, right, for the next three financial years is minus 15%. So year on year, uh, dropping 15%. Why? Because the big brokers, all 16 of them, now that's some serious clout there, isn't it? Uh, they are predicting that commodity prices, the cycle is going to turn against these companies, and we're going to go from earning 78 cents a share, which is a major, major peak, let's face it, uh, to earning only 48 cents a share by FY25, okay? So whilst the PE right now, 5.3, seems super cheap bargain basement, and your dividend yield of 8.9% is astronomical, gotta have it, those things are gonna change. To be fair, that's 6.8% is still pretty good. And eight, it's still pretty cheap, isn't it? I mean, historically, you're paying, you know, somewhere around, uh, well, let's say 12 to 14 for these, okay? So if we go back to more of a historical PE, I think that's too high, I think that's too high. Um, let's go target, let's say 12 for South 32 every day of the week, right? And that's why um, this starts to make more sense if 
uh, we have a low risk of achieving a minus 15% compound annual growth rate. I'll let you decide whether that's uh, true or false. I'll go to moderate if you think it's a more moderate risk um, level of, of things playing out the way the brokers are saying. And that brings it down to um, 4, 428. So I think either way you go, I don't think we're at high because this is so, so conservatively low. I don't think we're at high, um, but one of those two is probably correct. So it doesn't look crazy expensive here. It does look crazy expensive here. And the brokers aren't uh, they're, they're, they're pretty happy with it, aren't they? Three strong buys, 12 buys, two holds. Uh, the price target there, 509 from them. And I'm probably, so maybe split the difference between, uh, what was it, low there and moderate. Uh, you do the maths. Anyway, look, if, if, I, if I can't give you a definitive answer, maybe that helps you make your own definitive answer, uh, JS. Uh, look, short-term trend's fine. Will it turn around and start a new long-term uptrend? Maybe. Or is my gut feeling going to be right? And this, something like this is going to happen. I don't know. I'm not the best person to ask. <laughs> I'm so biased at the moment. NVX was one we thought was we we're going to get, get going and it hasn't. Uh, disappointing, Barry. Uh, and not sure. I'm not sure what's going on. But the last few days on the market, I, don't, I, mean, you, I know you felt it because... Um, you, you know, you're probably watching the sort of risk, uh, risk on the riskier end of the market is whilst the top end is, have, have flourished, or your, your blue chips I talked about before, holding this market up, bench pressing those index points. Underneath the surface, I reckon it's gotten a lot weaker over the last few sessions, uh, especially in these things here. Mega high risk turnaround play by nature. Uh, buy, hold, or sell. I think Barry wants me to get to the point. It's getting hard to hold it, isn't it, Barry? It's getting hard to keep the faith on this one. And because the risks are so high, I think you need to be really, really strict with these. And I mean, if you, you obviously, if you're in it, you've got to put it, draw the line somewhere. And uh, yeah, certainly you wouldn't want to see it go beneath 238, uh, close beneath there. I think it's lights out. Uh, but I think it's already in trouble. It's, a, it's already, so it's, it's already doing the, doing the wrong stuff. Uh, even that short-term trend is starting to turn down in line with the longer-term trend. Uh, so, yeah, very much sounding the alarm on that one. Um, if you kind of at that last resort point, one thing you can do is say, well, I'll let the market decide and see that low there at 261 uh, and maybe wait to the, at the end of the day. I mean, just to see what the low is for the day and you put your stop loss, you know, a few pips under that and let the market decide. So you've given it all the time in the world, all the chances, but tomorrow if it takes out the low, come hell or high water, you're out. And you know, good riddance to it and good luck to it if it goes back up. Um, but at least if it does pop up and keep going forever, well, you know, you've, you've drawn that line in the sand at least rather than just holding on and hoping for the best. Tricky one. Okay, crowd favorite from James Polynovo, which is not having a great day today, which is annoying because it was looking very, very solid yesterday. Uh, we did note that it smashed straight through two, which is really encouraging. And it was actually, was actually holding really nicely above two. Um, yesterday, when I tuned in, I didn't see the close on Polynovo. So when I tuned in, it was a full white candle closing at the high. And I was getting very excited because it would have been a compulsory buy uh, on that. I did see the shadow come in, which yeah, I thought, okay, well, maybe this, this is just... The supply here is just flexing its muscles a little bit. We're seeing a bit of a pop back today, but still, you know, the lower shadow today, you can still see there's a little bit of demand. So we're a little bit caught in the middle, happy to go a hold on it. I don't think there's anything so horrible in there that we have to manage our exit aggressively at this stage. And I think we, 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 we need to be, you know, disciplined in our approach and say, well, no, we're going to trust this. And we might have to give back a little bit of a profit if it all goes wrong, but I'm going to trust this on the basis that, you know, everything's still looking pretty good. However, we have talked about, you know, I know because I haven't changed this this drawing from last time. You know, there is some supply here. There's some supply here. There's some supply here. There's some supply there. Okay, so be sensible about it. You might want to tighten your stops up. You know, you might go a few pips under two bucks. Okay, um, for for your stops. Okay, you might want to uh, maybe if you. Well, I don't think. I was going to say maybe you want to get some out on the basis that we're close to supply. I don't know. I think it's still fine. I think it's still fine. I'm happy to go hold. Would I buy it today? No, not right today because of the candles. A bit a bit lousy. Um, but let's see a nice full white candle. And then it's getting upgraded to buy. All right. So definitely uh, a long bias retained on that one. This is for Clinton. Uh, G-O-R, which uh, is slipping again. It's slipping again. And this is that sort of resources uh, picture I talked about in S32, isn't it? That this, this idea 
of trying to buy these turnaround plays that they are super high risk because that long-term trend can re-establish. Um, it's tricky. It's tricky. Is there enough in it to hold it? Let me get rid of some of these drawings from last time. I can't remember what I said last time, uh, Clinton. Honestly, can't. Uh, but we would have noted that it is, uh, I think, pushing uh, back up uh, through here. Um, but it hasn't had a great time through the, since then. Uh, ideally, what should happen now is, is this area here acts as a bit of a, a demand point, right? So you hit that and you bounce back up. We're not seeing it. In fact, today we're going to close beneath it again, and it's starting to uh, therefore going to change those trends. Uh, could I hold it? Let's see where demand might come back in. Um, this is clearly there's some demand here, and we're interacting with it. That's not great. There's your, there's your light green zone, obviously. And the reason why I say that is because you've got this little gap here. Uh, and then here is, is where there's this clearly a bunch of demand. How do I know there's a bunch of demand? Well, only demand, only demand, significant demand can kick this thing uh, like that. It can give it a kick, it can give it a kick. Um, if you were a true believer, Clinton, perhaps you could give it a little bit more time and see how it went from here. And if you got one of those demand side candles in and around that zone, but I th I'm starting to feel like this is a little bit the too hard basket, that's all. Just because of its track record. Just because of its track record. Um, yeah, I wish I could give you, I wish I could see the future for you, Clinton, and give you that definitive, hey, this is exactly what you should do with it right now. <laughs> but I'm sorry, it's confusing. Remember, I'm trying to read demand and supply, and you tell me what demand and supply is doing. You tell me, I know, Carl, clearly this is what it's doing. It's not, it's confused. You've got this short-term rally, you've got a bunch of black candles coming in, you've still got some remnants of, of demand in the system. It's, where is it? Is it is it D equals S, perhaps? So I can't give you a definitive answer. Uh, from Glenn, MCR, let's have a look. A bit like Gold, Gold Road, isn't it? it? What do we do with these resource companies? What do we do with them? Do we keep the faith like S32, right? Do we keep the faith in this short-term trend? See how far they can go. Keep them on a tight leash. You know, just be absolutely brutal with them if they start doing the wrong thing again, because I, I'm not so sure. Look, this, this is up, this is holding. Uh, the, the candles aren't that fantastic, are they? And when we compare, oh, look, I'm sure percentage terms it's fine but it just doesn't have that steepness that the rest of the market had but I'm sure in percentage terms it's going to be better than the market anyway uh, look I can go hold but I don't think it's a screaming buy is it you know get where I'm going with that Glenn I think it's a hold on the basis that well whilst it's still in trend let's let's give it some room but I think you want to be really careful with them if they start to turn around because look at those, those even as it's going up there's still lots of black candles in the system let's have a look at SOL uh, which is doing some good stuff, probably on the basis of the coal price, because it's got that big shareholding in New Hope Corporation. It's just that way, well, New Hope looks awesome, isn't it? So, yeah, you know, it's odd that Sol's such a you know, diversified company as well, of course, but uh, I think this move here is more about the New Hope uh, move, perhaps, Glenn. So, you know, if you've uh, maybe just go to the source, maybe just grab a coal stock instead of going Sol Pattinson, but it doesn't look bad. It's, it's doing better stuff uh, than some of the other ones we've seen. Hasn't it? It's holding this nicely. Uh, the candles are back to white. Uh, volume's a bit non-existent, but uh, skewed by this th thing here. But otherwise, it's, it's, it's okay. We, 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 we are going to interact with this, but I think it's uh, got enough momentum to um, deal with it pretty successfully, especially if New Hope continues to go. Uh, now, this is from Aldous asking for a comment on BHP. My comment on BHP would be to see my previous comments on the entire material sector. I'm a skeptic. I'm not a believer. However, I need to put those thoughts aside and just read charts because that's that's what I do. Look, it's okay, it's fine. It's, I put in that category of the short-term trends are turning back up. The long-term trend is still undecided, really undecided. Uh, the top of the range is gonna kick in up here somewhere. Will it get there? There's nothing to suggest at this point it can't get there. Watch this level here, okay? I expect there will be some supply in and around that zone. What The way I would play these is let them do their thing until they start to throw in some nasty uh, supply candles. And then I would say be absolutely brutal with them. Okay. 
run like the disturbed burglar. Okay, because there's something going on. They're, they're tracking, they're in the basket. You can understand that when 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 this goes up, right? When, when this goes up, that stuff has to go up because they're in the basket of securities. The index funds have to buy every day. Your, your super funds, the, 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 was it with nine, 11%, whatever we're getting paid right now, super guarantee, it's going into the coffers of these super funds every day, every day. And the cash continues to pile up for them, regardless of market conditions, regardless of the economy, regardless of what, what's happening in China, that money has to go in the market every day because about 40% of Australia's equity is in this right now. If you look at your typical balanced fund, right? Typical balance fund, 40% Australian equities. And that BHP is waiting. That includes South 32. That stuff is getting bought every day by default. Not because it's good, not because the opportunity cost is better there than anywhere else, but simply because it is in the basket. And that basket has been skewed by the performance of those banks I showed you before and CSL. Okay. So just be a bit careful. It's my tip. Let's have a look here. Well, it'd be crazy not to look at this one here because it's so widely held. I'm sure people want to know, hey, what's the valuation of BHP car? Let's check it out. I'm sure we'll have a bunch of brokers covering. If we had 16 covering S32, we are going to have 17 covering BHP. Quite a polarizing company. Two strong buys, seven buys, 10 holds, price target, average price target, 43.30, allowing from upside, uh, some upside from uh, yesterday's uh, closing price. Okay, let's have a look at the earnings per share line. So we can see that currently earning, uh, sorry, currently earning about six bucks a share, let's call it. And obviously that has dramatically increased uh, since the, the pandemic on the huge increases in commodity prices, supply chain shortages, stuff like that. Okay, not necessarily a huge demand influx necessarily, but mainly on the supply side. Uh, and then we are expecting a decline in earnings, FY23, 24, uh, and uh, 25, 26. So we've got brokers going way out on this one, as you would expect. In terms of the uh, compound annual growth rate, if you know maths, you'll know what I'm doing to get that for you, uh, is minus 16%, so not dissimilar from uh, from South 32. In terms of the current PE, 8.5, but I think you look at the historicals, BHP kind of, you know, 15 every day of the week for, for BHP. Uh, moderate risk, I'll just show you the, the options here, you can decide. Uh, it's, it's, look, I reckon it's pretty expensive here. Okay, I know, I know the brokers are saying 43.30, but that's more to do uh, with PR than anything else. Uh, my valuations are, what's the word I'm looking for? Not accurate, honest, I mean accurate. Uh, now, let us say that I can't see a way to get to uh, BHP looking cheap here. I just can't. I think my numbers are right. I don't think I've forgotten anything. So I'm going to say, you know, on the valuation, BHP is not looking uh, crazy cheap here, just because the earnings are expected to contract so far. And even if we use historical BEs to account for, you know, this value trap, um, it still looks expensive to me. But that's just one person's opinion out of many. Uh, let's have a look at Grain Corp. I'm just no, we are actually we're we're up on time, so I'm just going to whiz through just technicals only on the next uh, few. We're going to stop at ID eight, okay? So these will go very quickly. Uh, and this one here, Grain Corp for Fiona, looking like it's holding this long-term uptrend zone, okay? So hopefully it continues that way. I would say if it starts to turn back down again, so beneath, beneath seven ninety-one, so close beneath this zone then I'm growing concerned that uh, actually the trend is changing. Okay, so be really careful. Happy to hold it on the basis that the trend, uh, the zone appears to be holding, albeit with a bit of a slip through here. Okay, and the candles more recently, three white candles, very solid, happy with those. Happy to hold on that basis, but be very careful through here, the trend will be changing. Okay, and then I think you need to take some pretty decisive steps, Fiona, on this one. If it closes above that high there, 865, I think you can in increase your confidence in this one. Okay, so a little bit line ball. We're stuck in the middle, aren't we? Short term downtrend, uh, long term trend is neutral. Let's go to AUZ, uh, which doesn't look good at all, unfortunately. Australian mines look a little bit, little bit perky through here, a little bit perky through here, some encouragement, but th I think this is a pretty horrible response to that rally, a bit of a relief rally. A little bit of volume. Look, 
if, if I squinted as hard as I can, I could say hold on the basis that there's a little bit of a change here. But uh, yeah, I would, I'm not a buyer. I mean, I'm, but hands down, I can tell you with absolute confidence, I would not put my money on that one right now. Rosh. Uh, now let's have a look at IMU for Warren, which is uh, Imogene. Started to get something going. It's lost a bit of a momentum uh, in that broader risk off over the last couple of days. Look, I think as long as it kind of holds up through here, Warren, I think you can stick with it, okay? But if you don't have it, I don't think you need to rush out and buy it today. I think it's losing some momentum there. But the all important zone is here, is that we want to see this long-term uh, uptrend zone get back to green and start to exert uh, this this demand force uh, on prices. So happy to go hold, but not a buy for me. Uh, next one is for Helen, looking at uh, ANO, which is Advanced Zinc Tech Limited. Great name. Looks interesting, Helen. I like this one. I like this shape to it. Okay, so we can see uh, this this base through here. Okay, the selling is done. <laughs> Anybody had to sell it, has sold it, and we're seeing a nice rally through here with good price action. Uh, and some really solid candles. I'm going to put to you though, it's a bit sketchy on the volume, um, so there's not a lot of liquidity there. So just be careful with it, okay? But otherwise, I'm happy with this one. It looks like looks like it's breaking through the long-term uptrend zone. It's got a bit of momentum behind behind it. Where could it all go wrong? Well, there's a bit of supply in here around three bucks, but I think we've got a little bit of room to move there. Would I buy it? I have to be careful here because it's so illiquid. If I say buy it and then everybody rushes out and does that, uh, it could move the price you know, artificially, and that wouldn't be good for anybody. But I let me say, I think it's it, there's signs here that it is qualifying as one of these high uh, risk uh, turnaround plays. Okay, what did we call them last week? Mega risky, all right, turnaround plays. Next one is LRS. I think this is going to, <laughs> Oh, look, here's the supply. You know, if I looked at it last week, I would have drawn that in. And then you've just seen the, the, the fingerprints there. This one's in a bit of trouble. It needs to do, do a lot better by the close today uh, because here's your demand. See this demand point? See, see, that's the demand. This candle here, that's your demand. That's your demand. That's your demand. And we don't want to go into that demand zone because it tell, it's telling us that they're not there anymore. Okay, see the, the, the height of that candle? Yep, the fact it's interacting with that is disturbing me a little bit. Um, we've also got a little bit of, um, we've got a point of demand here. So like this is it, today's low, 11. I don't wanna see it get much below that really. Uh, that wouldn't be great. Uh, otherwise, I can hold it on the basis of this here, but you know, this is this is clearly the problem that we need to get through. Uh, would I buy it today? Not with those candles, no, I can't buy it today. Yeah, so we're back to hold. Perry's hit the nail on the head. Absolutely. Reading my mind. TYX, uh, Tyrant Resources still looks good. Uh, is this a uh, manager exit? It's one I've tweeted about a few times. No, no, no. I'm going give it, to give it the benefit of the doubt. It's not a huge candle. It's not great, but it's not huge. And then we, we come back with this, and this is good today, uh, in what is a risk-off market for small cap stocks. I'm happy with this one. This is 100%, I think, still a hold for you, Andrew. I don't think you need to, um, to get out. Uh, he's saying he might be greedy here. So I'm guessing he's got some. I think you've got every right to continue to be greedy. Yes, I think so. I don't think you need to panic on that one just yet. Dogecoin. And oh, it's got, look, it's, it ha it's got a little bit of a pulse, but I would suggest to you that it is a major, major underperformer with respect to pretty much everything else. So on that basis, given it is just not capturing the market's attention anymore, and there's so, you know, so many other things had a better bounce in this, I'm going to say you, I think you still sell the rally in favour of going somewhere else. Uh, do I think Doge is going to is going to do this thing again? No, I don't. I just think it's it's yesterday's hero. I'm not a big fan of Doge, uh, Craig. I haven't uh, because I've, I, was, I was away. I haven't had a good chance to look at the whole crypto list apart from the ones I'm holding. <laughs> I know they were looking good until exactly two days ago. So I, I couldn't say I oh, will go look at go look at this. For example, I know I've got that one, which has uh, come off. Ethereum is still my best holding at the moment, so happy to, to hang on to that. My entry was right here. I told you so. I told you all right here. <laughs> so that's still looking good. I think it's still in trend. These candles are frustrating me, um, but this is the level here. As long as it continues to bounce off that and the light green, I think we're okay. But we have to respect, of course, that we are 
you know, we're in that we're in that long term downtrend right now. It's, it's doing all the stuff it's supposed to there. Uh, let's get to the next one, which is uh, Andrew saying, "Hi, Carl. I want to say thanks for putting these sessions on. It's been great information as well. Information on think markets. Uh, I've been continually seeing green great results." Uh, from dissecting information and building up your own style. That's what it's all about, Andrew, is uh, you take the bits you like from uh, from various people. Don't just listen to me and you build your own style. Uh, keep what works. This is, the, this is the key. Keep what works and get rid of what doesn't. What matrix is at the bottom? CNJ, I know I'm way over time, but I do, I do want to fulfill my uh, my promise of getting to uh, ID8, which is two more stocks. <laughs> How good is this? Wonderful, uh, Andrew. Hopefully you're on it. Um, it's a it's a monster. Don't, that's that's not a bad hammer. That's a good hammer. Yeah, I know that. I know the textbooks would tell you that that is something to worry about. Now, in my experience, that that's all good because it's the lowest shadow is what we want. Uh, you you pop up once you gap up like that. The natural response from the market because let's face it, it's all on all the chat rooms. It's all hot. Everybody's excited. I've tweeted about it a bunch of times. Maybe that's where you you found it. Hopefully you got it from me. That would make me feel good. Um, but. Uh, the natural response to a, to a gap like that is to sell. And that's what that lower shadow is. But when the demand, like after a gap, mind you, after a gap, the demand says, no, 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 this thing is still cheap. And then pushes it back up to high. That is not a bearish hammer. That is a bullish hammer. Uh, there's nothing. The best thing about this, you know, um, Polynovo, all of those supply zones, I drew on a Polynovo all over the place. Maybe a tiny, tiny, tiny one there. Um, but this has still got uh, some legs, I reckon. So I can't see any reason why you would sell that right now, Andrew. It looks amazing. Uh, let's get to the last one for the day, which is ID8, <laughs> which looks half decent. And another one uh, from Andrew. He's, uh, he's, he's fishing, he's fishing, isn't he? He's fishing for these. I don't hate it. In fact, it's better than don't hate it. It's, it's a cheeky, it's a cheeky little one, but you know, understand the risks, be nimble. Like I know Andrew is, uh, you know, you're not buying and holding these things for a long time, Andrew, are you? You're buying them for a good time. As long as the times are goods, we'll stick with them. If you start to see those, um, you know, supply signals come in then you would get out. But no no objections if you know what you're doing to having a cheeky little look at that one. Uh, I must admit, I did skip over one to get to ID8. So CXM, this is this will be the last one. Centrex, which I'm glad we're doing it, um, Ajit, because it looks really good. Uh, I like the, like the build-up here. So 100% uh, it's a hold. Uh, would, would I go buy? Look, I can't see any reason why you wouldn't. Um, you know, I don't know enough about it. Uh, but I, I think I think it's I think it's all pretty good. I mean, this is all good stuff here. Uh, a little bit disappointing here and here, but overall the trend is still very good. I know there's going to be supply here though, and I think maybe that's what we're dealing with. But I think there's more than enough in there to hold it. And uh, with a couple of maybe see this candle high here, that high there, maybe a close at 18 again is where you would actually buy some and add some more. But it's a nice one to finish on, Ajit. I, I really really like the chart of that one. Uh, so well done. Okay, thanks everybody. Let us uh, wrap it there. We'll be back on Tuesday. This is the important bit today. Tuesday next week, we resume uh, Ask the Experts. If you're watching on the YouTube uh, and you'd like to join me live and get your questions answered, that's how you do it. Uh, if you're not a client of Thick Markets, you really should be. We have all the products you need to trade, fantastic rates to do it at, uh, $8 flat rate for your equities, that's your, your physical shares, are there, chest sponsored, and our CFD uh, trading is commission free. How about that? 24-7 uh, customer support, world-class trading app, and of course you get my analysis. If you are not a client yet, please uh, become a client, head to the website uh, or email the address and we've got a bunch of uh, free trades to get you going. If you're already a client, we do have a refer a friend program, so I'm sure you can find four friends still trading with their, uh, their banks. What a crazy thing that would be to do, paying those exorbitant rates, come over to us. You get the same chess sponsorship, but for a fraction of the price and some wonderful support as well. If you're watching me on any of those socials, please hit the subscribe button to stay notified of any of our future video updates and hit the thumbs up button to let us know you like what we're doing so we'll continue to do it. Apart from that, it has been a pleasure chatting with you today. All the best for your trading and investing until we catch up again. Bye-bye for now.